Okay, everybody, uh, 30 seconds into this, and I want to go and start this uh, rehearsal. How to make a simple ebook is a how to on how to make an ebook <laughs> using the EPUB format. Um, my name is Rick, and I'm going to put something in the chat so people know um, that started. Um, and maybe I'll be able to refer to it uh, later. Um, I'm hoping when this rehearsal is finished, I'll be able to look at this and, and make adjustments on things I'm going to change uh, as we go. Um, my name is Ricky Molly. Probably, not actually, exactly nine people bought it. <laughs> so I'm not here to tell you how to sell your, your book, but I am here to tell you how to get your content into uh, sell it and 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 see it up there on on the web I'm gonna go and bit about my experiences with it I'm gonna take a look at what, how straightforward it is and, and it might even get you give you some ideas on on how to how to how to go forward then we're gonna actually make an ebook there's some content online that we will use to make an actual ebook that we can then enjoy for our personal use on our. Now, as I'm doing all this, I do see a lot of uh, connect and disconnect. Um, hopefully, that's not an issue, but I'm going to experience it uh, for myself. This is uh, me and my ebook, and what I'll do is let me share my screen and give you the the view of this book. It, it, again, only nine people bought this thing, so don't go by me on, with regards to <laughs> how to sell your book. This talk is about how to make an ebook so that you can have it on Amazon and. Here you can see just a little bit of the content in this book. I, I will uh, make a comment that all of this material here is from a blog. So um, where I'm going with that is if, if you have a desire, if you're here to learn about making an ebook or an EPUB, Chances are you are doing uh, something uh, that that um, chances are you are doing something that you are writing something or, or producing something that you want to get out to an audience of some of some sort written format and an EPUB is a perfectly natural way to do it. Um, let's get into what's inside of an ebook. So that it, so that you get a feel for um, what's happening. I am going to point to this YouTube that uh, Michael Sowers uh, produced, and it gives a history of the. Um, it gives a history of. Uh, ebooks uh, and it there's a, there's a lot of history there, there's a good amount of development right up until um, well, right up until the present day with Amazon version 3 but the main point of this is is a lot of books were well a lot of ebook readers were originally devices then they became applications inside of devices. Everything really came to a head in 2007 when Amazon released their Kindle. And I like this presentation. If people are interested in the history of eBooks, taking a look at this and walking down memory lane to see all these devices was very, was very interesting. Um, I 
I will mention that I also like this presentation because he does touch on the major ebook formats, and there's only two. The EPUB is what we're going to learn today, but everyone should should know that the most I would hazard to guess that the most popular form is the um, Amazon format. The Amazon format came from another device that that produced their own format called the Moby Pocket. This format has some Amazon digital rights management applied on top. Uh, what I, it's interesting that that there's two major formats, EPUB, by far the most popular, and the one where you can find a lot of content for, but then there's Amazon with their own format. But both formats, EPUB and Amazon W or Moby Pocket, you can get tools to convert between the two. So it's it's not a it's not a terrible burden to to uh, learn EPUB. It's not going to set you back in any way because you can convert your EPUB into something like the the format used by Amazon. Now, uh, when we look inside an ebook, the easiest way to think of an ebook is a zip file that contains HTML files. That's the simplest way to think of what's inside an ebook. So, for all, for those of you who who have put off learning HTML, <laughs> now's your chance to learn it because you you need to understand HTMLs to properly make an ebook. Now I'll, I'll talk about my approach in a, in a moment, but that's the core of the, of the ebook format. It's a zip file with a defined internal structure that you can that is uh, consists of different assets. HTML files, CSS files, image files, and a few others that you see here. What we're going to do now is make ourselves an ebook. So we're going to take a look at the details of this. And as you can see, there's not very many slides because we're going to go and, and make an ebook for ourselves. We're going to get really hands on, or at least I'm going to get really hands on. This presentation, even though this is a class, it, it's more of a it's more of a show and tell and the homework if you choose to do it is to repeat what I did perhaps adding your own style or adding your own adjustments to the exercise that I'm going to do the main thing about making an ebook is is to understand first of all the the core technologies HTML and specifically XHTML and CSS and we're, we're going to get into that in a moment. But the other key thing that I'm not going to talk about in this course is writing or obtaining content. Uh, we'll talk about the content that we're going to use for this ebook, but writing would <laughs> you can you can have a whole five day class on how to write a write a novel write a so collection of short stories, write a memoir. These are these are things that that you may be moved to produce for yourself. And if you are moved to do that, then how better to who better to publish your own work than yourself in this day and age, in this digital age where we can produce our own electronic content and share it out to our friends and to our family, or even put it onto a marketplace like an Amazon, but also Apple Books has a marketplace, lots of other resources for, for buying books. Uh, Smashwords is, is one, and, and you may have your own vanity website, but also Facebook and, and Twitter. You can upload your EPUB to these things and have people download your words. It's an exciting time to 
be an author, to imagine yourself as an author, because really we we have the same the the same platform, if you will. Uh, the, the access is 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 really open. The, the the next thing about making an ebook though, once you have your content, once you understand HTML, is you'll need to lay out the content. And that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to use a tool called Sigil to, to do that. Sigil S I G I L is a a EPUB editor. It's a tool that lets you construct a, a informant and a fully uh, acceptable EPUB artifact, a document that you can then share to other Use this tool to make our own, our own ebook. And hopefully I'll have time to go over book covers Although that itself will, will could potentially take a lot of time. A lot of people want to know how to make their ebook covers. I'm not an expert uh, in 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 making a snazzy cover. I don't have a a, a and a, a background in design, but there are some some principles and and a, a resource that I'm going to share. In, in how to do that. So the rest of this talk will be how to um, go through these steps here and we're going to do this in a hands-on way. I'm going to do this in a hands-on way. Now, um, I think uh, be before we get started, I'm going to go set up a few of my files. Um, There is a section on what's inside in tool, but I thought it'd be at least helpful just to go through the specifics of the, the contents by looking at an actual ebook. This is a book called Immediately Effective Instruction by a gentleman named um, Don Jones. And I've double clicked it and opened it in my Windows ebook EPUB reader, which is called at Quill. I, I just picked this out of the Windows Marketplace. And you can see as an ebook, it it is a reflowable. You can also see that there's a very basic table of contents uh, that's here. And um, even though it's one singular file, though, I'm now going to show you the inside of this file. If I um, close this, if I use my zip tool, which is this tool here, 7-zip, I can open this file. And you can see inside that it is just a container for other files. There's a whole bunch of XHTML files that are in here. and there's even some CSS that's in here. And finally, there is some what we call meta information, which explains the, the contents of the book. All of this is defined in the EPUB format specification, uh, which I have here. But there's no need to understand this 100%. There's, you just need to understand the tool that you're using, Sigil, to, to make your own conformant EPUB. There's no need to, to digest all of this material that's here in the EPUB spec. Although I think it's helpful to skim through it as you become more adept or as you work on your particular project. There may be some new things that you need to do. Uh, to understand uh, uh, there may be some new techniques that you need to apply 
and having a, a good knowledge of, of the EPUB format will, will be helpful for you to getting a particular layout that you want. <clears throat> now that was the inside of, a, of an EPUB, but, and I showed you it in a zip tool, but I also mentioned that we're going to be using this tool called Sigil. Now I can open this directly in the tool itself that we're going to use. I'm going to uh, ignore this prompt. And what you can see is that same zip format expanded like a project listing here. And you can then double click onto any one of these and see a little preview here on the right. The HTML editor that's here has all of the HTML compressed onto uh, a, a single line as if it was trying to uh, save space. But the editor does let you update the HTML so that you can uh, see the layout a little better. Finally, there's also uh, the table of contents that is rendered here from this file here, the ncx file. Oh, I thought this would let me change the update this uh, format, but this is this is an XML describing the table of contents. What I'm going to do is just double click onto um, a section here, lather, rinse, and repeat. And you can see that there's other other ways to uh, generate it or edit the HT, um, table of contents, etc. A single is a very powerful tool, and it's a tool, again, that we're going to use to make our own EPUB. And it, it kind of begs the question, what are we doing? What are we doing in this tool? Um, this tool provides you the entire, uh, well, simply put, this is the tool that I use to make an ebook. Um, and what I liked about this tool is it shows you the internal, the internals of the EPUB so that you can, by understanding it, make use of other tools that you might find out there. There are a lot of tools that, that there are, I'm sure, a good number of tools that generate EPUBs using a, a what you see is what you get type editor. In other words, I can go in here and maybe edit something. Um, that does, that's not how Sigil works. A Sigil works directly on the XHTML files as well as the metadata and, and style sheets. And it it provides tools to, to let you manipulate the contents of those XHTML. It's, it's even though we are looking at what for some might consider code, it, it's actually, I think, uh, straightforward and it's a great introduction to what is inside of an EPUB. Now, I mentioned that there's the importance of understanding the key concepts um, This is the key concept uh, of, of that that I wanted to uh, point out. I'm in a um, a web page that lets me look at HTML with a with a little bit of a preview window right here, and uh, I don't need this console window. I wish I could, yeah, I can X this out. Um, what you can see here is that this is HTML, and EPUBs want to use an XHTML format, but XHTML, the simplest way to think of it is it's, it's every tag, which is like this, this letter P, for example, um, has an ending tag, which is the slash P. So every tag, which are these which are these blocks that have the brackets are 
open with have an open, but then there's also an, an, a closing tag. And that's all that XHTML is. And in HTML, where, where it's a little more relaxed, browsers can can make some guesses as to the the whether or not there should be an ending, and um, but XHTML is a little more strict. And I think when I do this talk for real, I'll, I'll have a better answer for, for XHTML. But these are the HTML basics. There's a, there's a button, H2 and H3. And you can see that the browser renders these using a particular inbuilt style written by a style sheet. And the style sheet uses CSS. So in the style sheet, I have here a paragraph that I have identified graph with OH. It will use the style that's defined in the style sheet. And in the style sheet, there's lots of different styles possible. You can come here and put in um, background text. Um, um, you can put in some margin. You can put in some some uh, border uh, si specifics, um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, here. And these, um, these styles here, like if I put in background color, um, disk. Um, maybe not this, maybe, oh wow, well, very fancy this tool. Um, right here, yeah. Um, you can see that you can really change the look and feel once you have an understanding of style sheets. Well, but for people who are writing books, you don't really need to know a lot of the, 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 the more graphical parts of a style sheet, like the colors and the margins. Maybe you, you need to know the margins and the padding, but but for some of the, the decorative pieces of CSS, cascading style sheets, you, you don't need to know all of those things. I think for writing an ebook, for at least a demo we're going to do, the paragraph tag, P, and knowing that there's a, a little bit of a, of a structure for these uh, is is sufficient. There's the HTML that is the, the the owner. There's there's this block here that's defined by the head tags, which point to the different style sheets and uh, these kind of things. Sigil will take care of this part for us. But this is the quote key concepts of HTML and CSS or cascading style sheets. HTML defines the defines how those how that content is styled. Now, what we're going to do next is find some content that we're going to make into an ebook, and this is the part that I was inspired. I think on the hackathon. Slack channel, uh, there was a um, a, um, a tweet um, that went out um, about somebody had shared this tweet by Rudy Rucker, who is a uh, cyberpunk author uh, from the uh, um, late eighties and ninety and um, early nineties, and he was a a peer. Uh, with with uh, Bruce Sterling and William Gibson, these are authors of the cyberpunk, the cyberpunk genre, and a uh, offshoot of sci-fi. Rudy Rucker posted this that hey, there's this anthology Mirror Shades, and I made a website for it. And you go to his website, and you can read the the entire book. But I would argue that that reading it uh, like this, a little uh, um, uh, laborious 
uh, to read a, a HTML uh, formatted in this way. Um, the, if, if you put this into, um, and I don't know how to do this in um, uh, Chrome, but in Mozilla Firefox, if you switch to the reader view, you get a, a perhaps a, a more palatable uh, layout. But again, to, for, for us to read this, we'd have to cart around our laptop. And even though laptops are light, it does not beat our devices or our, our very light Kindle device or EPUB reader device. And when I saw this posted on Slack and I read this tweet, and I love how he says, I pirated a pirate edition. <laughs> um, I thought, oh, let's, this would be a great uh, exercise to make this content. Are about 13 uh, short stories that are in here, and we're going to make an EPUB, which is an anthology of these uh, 13 stories. So to, to go about this, and uh, I've, I've done this uh, leading up to today's uh, presentation, the, the way to go about this is to recognize that that a book like this has, number one, a lot of paragraphs, but it also has natural section marks, like here is the author and here is the, the book, I mean the story that they've written. So there's a natural structure for this. and. Sickle as a tool oh, and, and make a new uh, new book here um, let's say discard um, when you open up Sigil, it's ready to, to do a new book um, I've also modified Sigil uh, so that I can um, bring in content using text files or using Microsoft Word document files. Now, when I um, so when I think about making an ebook, I think one thing that that might occur to you, or one thing that occurred to me to do this was that hey, I'll just copy this whole thing into a text file, and uh, I'll put this into Notepad. Um, I'll put this into my uh, downloads directory. Um, so I can remember where where this is later. Um, I'll call this MS um, MS text. It's a little. It might be a little confusing to remember this by, but what what I can then do is use the plugin to bring in this this text file. So now I click on these buttons here, it points to my directory, and when I say open, um, this will go ahead and, and read this, uh, this, this text file. Now I'm going to click on close. I think that's what causes it to run. Yeah. So here is a text HTML file. If I double click on it, you can see that it it has the whole um, has the whole book in there, and I think this is this is one way to import content into um, uh, this into your um, EPUB is to save it into a text file and then bring, read it in using uh, Sigil's um, text import plugin. But you still then need to uh, convert this text into something that has some structure to it. Namely, you want there to be, for example, I'm trying to scroll to this. <laughs> you want there to be um, a, um, you want this, for example, perhaps to be um, an, an, an H tag. We'll uh, 
make this H2. And we'll make the story um, in H1, for example. Now you're starting to see a little bit of the, the work uh, that's involved with converting a text file to an EPUB. You're walking through this, this very large file and you're, you're annotating it or, or uh, the, the part of the, the, the term you might use is you're, you're marking up the document with the structure that you want by adding in the correct uh, HTML. But again, I've, I've looked at these, I've looked at this document for the purpose of this class and looked around, isn't there a better way? Because there is a little bit of a structure implied by the HTML file that's here. One thing that some people uh, have, one thing that, that occurred to me is I could import the, the actual raw HTML. And I think what I'll do uh, for the next rehearsal is just try this HTML format myself. But you can see that there's these classes here that implies that there's a style on this. And if I wanted to bring this in as an HTML file, I'm going to have to um, um, files into something that that I probably will will need to update, and that would take a little bit of that would take a little bit of time. The the way that that I settled on for for moving forward with this exercise is using um, Microsoft Word. I can copy and paste again this whole thing. And instead of putting it into a text file, I can put it into Microsoft Word, like document, paste this whole book in there, or this whole anthology. And Microsoft Word has this feature where you can count the words. You can see this is a 240 page anthology. This is a 240 page book. If I make use of style, do my markup inside of the um, Microsoft Word, which ends up being a little bit easier. So if I go into here, I see that this is normal, but I can mark this with um, an H2, for example. Um, in this case, I'm going to make this heading 2. Then I can take this spot, this thing, and make it heading 1. Well, uh, for example, and what, what I can do now is, is just go through the entire um, document in, in, this, in this fashion. Now, I think there's a way. Um, that's not going to, that's not a great way to, to look at that. I'm going to close the outline. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into go to all of these individual sections and and make uh, the the uh associate each section with it with it with a heading so this is the uh, acknowledgments um, this is the um, um i'm gonna make a break here i'll put this as a as a preface i'll put this as the heading and you can see it, what I'm going to be doing with the, with the rest of this document. Um, I'll quickly do that for these uh, roughly 13 stories. And Microsoft Word, there's ways to, to even search. I can search on this particular style or this particular font, but uh, I didn't prepare for, for doing that. Uh, I'm just going to eyeball it um, using this uh, layout. 
This is uh, Rudy Rucker here, the person who <laughs> copied this. So hopefully during the uh, presentation, uh, people will have some, some comments uh, about this uh, procedure that I'm doing. Um, I've even thought about one of the things I noticed is this part here is a little bit like a, um, um, a preface to the story itself. And these can also be made to a separate section. Let's go and do that. H3. to make this a H3. Just realize I can probably just get rid of some of these styles. That might even be um, um, a little easier. Um, that could be something I can prepare for the next uh, rehearsal. I might, I might consider doing that for the next rehearsal, is setting it up so that it's a little easier. I, I also made a note to myself from the last time I did a rehearsal that I can just have all this be done in a, um, in a, uh, um, ahead of time. But now I make this document, um, I'll put this in downloads folder. I'll make this under shade, um, and now that I have this um, doc file, I can then go into Sigil and make this a um, a file. I'm going to discard all this, make a whole new one. We're going to use the plugin to bring in the document, the Word doc file. Which is the one that I did? Yeah, this one converted. There you go. I have a book that consists again of a big gigantic XHTML file, but there's already a little bit of the structure uh, that's that's in here from from the 
work that we had done. We can then get rid of some of these sections as well. Let me... Uh, I'm back. Um, just a quick break here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is take a look at this um, um, ebook that we have so far and point out that one of the keys in making an EPUB is to take advantage of the fact that you're inside of a container, you're inside of a directory that can consist of multiple files. So, a natural way to to organize this work is to break up each of these files based on the stories or the sections of the book. Now, inside of the tool, we, we have the ability to um, um, go to a particular section like the acknowledgments, for example, um, and we can convert it. Uh, we can add a um, a block here, um, this H1, for example, put a you know, put an enter there, and we can then um, use this tool here to break up the book right at that marker. You can see now I have two sections. One is this this smaller file, which just contains. Um, um, which just contains this preface content uh, area, table of contents, which again, we're gonna take care of in a moment. And then what is quote, the rest of the book. Um, but um, what we can do is go to each of these sections here and, and mark it as the, identify the H1 and just add uh, this this mark here uh, to split this file into even more um, uh, sections. So here I've just made a, a, another separate file for the rest of the book and in section two just contains the uh, acknowledgments. So what I'll do now is do the same thing for section three. Well, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can find um, all of the H1 um, um, blocks here um, as a section. But I'm also mindful of the fact that I really started everything with an H2. So I'm actually just going to search for an H2. Um, the converter tool uh, did that for me. And what I can do is in SIGL, I can press enter, but I can also mark this as an area um, for the uh, for a split. I can do control shift return and it will make a split mark here. And then I can use this tool um, 
split at markers to cut my file up e even more um, against all the split markers. Uh, so I'll have to maybe in, in the next rehearsal, I'll, I'll have that be a little more polished, uh, but um, let me go and acknowledge that I can be a little more smooth in describing that, that part out. Um, so we're going to find all the, the H2s. So I'm going to find the next H2, uh, which is there at the top. Uh, oh wait, I'm going to go here to this file. Um, and I'll close the other ones. Um, this is the journey back continuum, but if I go and find the next H2, This entry for Tom Maddox, I'm going to do Control Shift Enter to make a split mark. Now I'm going to find H2 again. Control Shift Insert. 13 of these stories. So as you're seeing me do this, one of the things that you might want to start imagining for yourself is, hey, what if I had written a whole bunch of content like, like this book? I'm going to be able to um, convert it into an EPUB very quickly using Sigil. Um, Now that all of these are um, done, and I've gone all the way back to the beginning of the file, I can then do split at markers to make what is a reasonable looking um, organization. Now that we have this, we can then flesh out the table of contents using the, and uh, we can then um, pick um, which tags we want. We're going to pick um, H, well, I think level two, um, and um, we're going to, because the H2 is associated with uh, the names, to bring in just the H2, uh, for example. Um, pick all of them but I'm not going to, I'm going to include this, include this, but some of these I'm going to not include. So that I'm, I'm not going to include that, but I am going to include these. Um, just see, let's just see what it looks like. Click on Tom Maddox, it goes here. If I click on the um, Jaren's back, it goes there. So it's not perfect. But you, you see what you see what I'm uh, going for. Uh, he's back in. It's part of it is because uh, the the author and the section names are swapped. So you you might consider just including uh, only the um, the um, the H two. Or, or promoting these, it looks like you can do something like that. Um, so there's a, a number of things that we can do uh, to make the um, um, formatting a little nicer, a, a little easier to understand because again, the content uh, was written this way. Now, clearly what we could do is then just swap these two below the title for example, that makes uh, more sense to me. And I think for the next rehearsal, I will, I will make the format so that it's a little, it, it's inverted in the, in the way that, that uh, makes sense. Well, so we have the, the, the EPUB almost shaping up. Uh, what we'd like to do is just bring in a cover and um,
Now I have to figure out how to do that in here. There's a, a big um, um, a uh, there is a big a um, there's a big SIGL documentation uh, uh, ebook on how to use SIGL, and you can use that to learn about th this feature. Um, when I was thinking about the cover, I was thinking about sharing this. Um, when I did the cover for my little book that's on Amazon, I followed this uh, person's uh, tutorial. He uh, made an ebook cover entirely in Microsoft Word. I didn't think you could use Microsoft Word for that. Um, but it turns out that it, it is something that um, that um, this Microsoft Word document. This is this is uh, the cover. If you click on the various uh, things here, or even enable the um, the tag, you can see that it's just text uh, on top of a on top of a big picture. Um, uh, we can even um, see the remote. Oh no! Uh, yeah, you can see that this um, is one way that it gets laid out. Um, but as a book, it, it gets laid out like this. I I welcome all of us uh, to 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 look at this resource. Um, uh, this this person here, Derek Murphy, he's one of these people who's constantly promoting uh, his expertise in publishing uh, books and I really liked his content on the generating a, a cover. Um, but we have a pretty good cover opportunity uh, with the Rudy Rucker book because he has four different images here and I've um, taken this this big file and just cut it up into these four things. And I'm just going to put these four books, these four covers into the, um, um, into the system. Um, I'm going to add an existing file and I'm going to go and put in uh, these four things here. Um, these get put in as, as images that I want. Um, that's it. That's it. Now when I uh, save this thing, I can put this into a um, sample book. MS. And when I close it, find it again. There it is, and I had it in here. So I'm going to get rid of that and put it and go back up here and then open this up in, in Aquio. Um, and there's the book. Here it is with a very basic uh, uh, cover. These links we'll probably want to get rid of because these links point to the internet. So one of the things that you can do to 
to improve on this particular content is to just get rid of these links. I am a little that there's no um, content for the table of contents didn't really uh, get generated. Uh, I'm going to go to um, Sigil. There's a table of contents here, but here, if I do um, no, not print preview. Sample book does not contain my my full um, um, table of contents. Uh, the, the, the table of it, it should be there. Um, I, um, go to maybe a separate section. Mm. Yeah, very intriguing. I'll have to go and I'll have to go and see what the story is, oh, but. That's the, um, if I go to the library, yeah, no data, I wonder, um, oh, okay, let me get, uh, I'll remove this, um, go and try to uh, read this again. Add a book. So here's my book, I double click on it, correct. So I'm glad we got to this ending here. And this is probably a good place for me to <laughs> stop while I'm ahead. Um, this was the rehearsal for a how to on how to make an ebook. Things that I still need to work on, a lot of things to prepare so that it's a little smoother, but hopefully this talk live, there'll be people talking at me, asking questions, editing it. And, um, importing it and, and doing all those things with the split markers, um, etc. So reader makes perfect sense to me and worked out very well. So hopefully um, the, the real demo will be for me to push it up into my Kindle. Um, the other thing I'll need to talk about next is the uh, actual um, um, Metadata. Talk about metadata for the next uh, rehearsal. Thank you very much for watching this. I appreciate it.